What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18.3 Beta 3 to registered developers one week after the release of Beta 2. Now along with this release, we also got the second beta for iPadOS 18.3, WatchOS 11.3, macOS Sequoia 15.3, tvOS 18.3, and VisionOS 2.3. But of course in this video we're talking all about iOS 18.3 Beta 3, so starting off with the size of this update it came in at a clean 755 megabytes on the dot on my iPhone 16 Pro Max now if we go ahead and check out the build number for this update if we go to our settings general about the iOS version is 22d 5055b so we do have a b at the end of the build number which indicates we are getting pretty close to a final release I would not be surprised if this was the final beta before the RC but we'll talk about that near the end of the video now down here below at the modem firmware that is 1.40 0.03 for the iPhone 16 series. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18.3 beta three? And the first thing has to do with summarize notifications. The feature here in iOS 18, where if you go into notifications and then go to summarize notifications, this is where you can choose to have applications, you know, have summarized notifications when you get multiple notifications from that application. Of course, from wallet here, you can see we have three notifications and that is the summary. So the first thing you'll be able to tell is now when something is summarized, it is in italics. So it's italicized now instead of standard text like every other notification. So as you can see, only the wallet has summarized notifications. And again, that's signified with that font change with it being in italics. And you might notice now that the news applications are no longer summarizing the notification. So as you might be aware, as I've covered the, for the past couple of weeks, the BBC has been very vocal towards Apple about Apple basically just sending out misleading headlines, just inaccurate and false headlines using the summarize notifications feature. Now, that's not necessarily fully on Apple for that. Their headlines are kind of weird, but nonetheless, Apple did, you know, take this to heart. They did take the constructive criticism. And now if you go down here under news, for example, you'll see that it says temporarily unavailable. So even if you have summarized notifications turned on for news applications, they are not going to be available until Apple solves this issue with Apple intelligence and you know making these summaries misleading in some cases now you'll notice that it's not just news it's also for news applications or news sources even such as reddit so reddit could be a source of news so apple has made that temporarily unavailable and even tv for some reason is temporarily unavailable for summarizing the notification so that is very interesting there's also a change right here up top when it talks about summarized notifications so before it said this over here on the left it said summary accuracy may vary based on content now Apple has removed that and they added a line break and now it says summaries may contain errors so they're more basically just more honest with what you might see with these summarized notifications and there's also a change when you enable summarized notifications for the first time so before when you turned it on nothing happened but now with 18.3 beta 3 if you turn on summarized notifications we have a brand new splash screen here we've seen this splash screen before in other places but now it shows very clearly that it's a beta up top there in all all caps and it basically gives you an explanation and it even says beta again down here this beta feature will occasionally make mistakes that could misrepresent the meaning of the original notification so it makes it abundantly clear here that this could make errors and also that it is a beta so that is new and if you go to choose notifications to summarize it will show you this right here as well and even down here once again it says this is a beta feature summaries may contain errors especially when you select news and entertainment and when you do select that it does say temporarily unavailable summaries will automatically appear when available so if you go ahead to summarize all notifications that just takes you right back here and again you will see that temporarily unavailable section under those specific areas like news reddit and tv and also if you swipe over on a notification summary and go to options we have some extra options here so first off we now have the option to turn off 
the notification summaries for that specific app, as you can see right there. And also it now just says turn off instead of saying turn off all blank notifications like Discord or news or wallet. For example, it doesn't show the app name anymore. It just says turn off. And also for summary, we now have the option to thumbs it up or thumbs it down to say if it was a good or a bad summary. So clearly that's gonna be the big change here in iOS 18.3 beta three, but we also have some additional ones as well. So as you guys might recall, I was not here to make a video on beta two. So there was a new feature in beta two as well. And that is calculation continuations. So you can now repeat calculations by tapping on the equal sign. So you can see if I tap equals, it will continue that calculation and it will show us what that is right there. That was not possible before in iOS 18.2. When you tapped on equals, nothing would happen. Also, 9to5Mac found references to a new application that Apple might be working on called Invites. And this is apparently going to be able to create and manage events. So they said that after they analyzed the code, they believe that the app is designed to help users organize meetings and in-person events, although Apple's calendar app can already be used for that exact same thing. So it's hard to see why we would need an invites application unless it has extra features that you know were not found in the code, but that is something that we might be seeing in the near future. Also, sleep apnea notifications are now enabled in Brazil. So if you live in Brazil and you want to get sleep apnea, notifications when you wear your watch to bed you can now do that and then there was also a fix for the tiny apple logo bug on the 16 pro max i actually had this myself a few times on 18.2 and 18.3 where the apple logo was much smaller than it should be when rebooting now as far as the performance goes here with ios 18.3 beta 3 i've had really no issues so far after installing the update really nothing stands out as being much different from beta 2 Beta 2 is pretty solid in terms of performance, but I did run a Geekbench test here on Beta 3. We scored a 34.18 on the single core, 85.41 on the multi-core, and you can kind of see how that compares to previous runs. So it was a little bit slower, actually it was a little bit lower in terms of score compared to the previous beta but again the device was still re-indexing i did run this pretty quickly after installing so i will run a fresh one before my apple weekly episode on saturday and i'll give you guys more of an update on the performance with this version at that time but again i don't expect it to be much different from beta 2. now as far as battery life goes battery life has been okay on 18.3 overall ever since the first beta nothing really too crazy to me so i'm at 71 percent now i believe that's what i started the video with not the screenshot what I started this video with. So battery life seems to be potentially improved here with beta three. I have been recording for about 15 minutes and my battery life has remained steady at the same percentage. So that is a good sign. We might actually see a small bump in battery life here with this latest beta. And of course, with that final release. But once again, I'll give you an update after actually using the software for a few days in my Apple Weekly episode. Now, as far as the release notes, Apple has not updated the release notes for beta three, but you could see here for beta two, there was a bug fix for Jinmoji where a personalized Jinmoji might not generate without selecting a different person first. I actually had that myself, that has been fixed. And there was also a bug fix for health kits and a bug fix for writing tools tools related to third party. So it says for third party apps adopting writing tools API, if the first responder is not a UI view, it will not be able to use the complete inline experience. So that was a bug before and that has been resolved. Now, as far as what to expect next from Apple, next up is most likely going to be iOS 18.3, either beta four or RC. It's hard to say at this point, which one Apple is going to go with. We are on a B at the end of the bill number. So it really could go either way. I'm just going to make a 50 50 guess and say RC will be next. So next week on the week of January 20th is when we should see iOS 18.3 RC or beta four. And then if it is the RC, that means that we should get the final release before the end of January. So iOS 18.3, the final release public release, 
could be out as early as the week of January 27th. Now, if we get beta 4 next week and the RC comes in the week of the 27th, that means that we should see the final release of 18.3 on the week of February 3rd. But either one is possible at this point. And then, of course, after 18.3 gets released, we will see iOS 18.4 beta 1 begin beta testing. So that's going to be a much more significant update than iOS 18.3, especially for those in the EU, since we should see Apple Intelligence come to the EU with that update. And of course, the Siri with App Intense. That will be a pretty big update as well. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 18.3 beta 3. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future iOS update videos. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.